My name is Derek and today I'm going to be showing you a repair specifically on the MacBook Pro A2442. Replacing the LCD panel might seem daunting because it involves a little bit of solder work and it also requires separating the panel from the display without completely destroying the backlight. Now this is easier said than done but it has a lot of similarities to say working with an iPad display. I'll attempt to convey as much knowledge as I can regarding the entirety of this repair throughout this video. Let's get into it. This MacBook Pro A2442 has a broken display. We'll power it off and take out the screws on the back so that we can pop off the back panel. Let's isolate the battery by getting to it by removing the two connectors here and the screw. There's a series of screws at the top that we need to remove in order to remove the bar that has these three coax cables attached to it. A couple more brackets for the display connectors and let's be sure to remove the sleep wake sensor. There's a couple brackets covering the hinges. We'll disconnect the display and now hanging it off the edge of a table I'll be able to remove the remaining screws on the hinges and slide it out. We'll separate this flex cable we'll talk more about that later. Now I'm going to slide in a piece of plastic here on the bezel and carefully slide. No heat required for this part it should just slide right off and pop it off saving the adhesive so you can reinstall it later nice and easy just like that there's a series of screws there's two here that hold down this little bar and the remaining four that hold the flex cables down to the frame under the rubber in the corner there's going to be a screw along with a, a, a handful across the bottom holding the display panel down to the bottom of the frame and another on this corner. Now that we've got those screws out we can start focusing on the adhesive that holds the, this display panel down to the frame. I'll peel up this sticker here and expose the black shiny adhesive. With my tweezers I'll roll it up and carefully start pulling. You want to be as horizontal to the uh, frame as you can and go nice and slowly and what will happen is it'll stretch and release from both the frame and the display be careful and go slowly otherwise it'll break and it'll make your li life really difficult because you'll have to pry up the screen and pull and continue to find the broken pieces but over time if you go nice and slow enough uh, you'll be able to do this and you can use a little bit of heat as well just don't go crazy because we don't want to mess with the backlight but nice and slow here's the trick with this adhesive and it'll pull out giving you a clean panel removal uh, if you take your time go really nice and slowly then the panel will slide out just like that leaving the backlight intact and behind we'll set this aside so that it doesn't get any dust or debris on it and remove the ICs from the display panel. So a small one and a big one. Now on the new display, I'm gonna isolate this area so I don't accidentally uh, cause any damage with the heat. I've got some copper tape here that I'm going to put over to isolate this uh, along with the shield that kind of isolates the whole area. We'll add some flux. Uh, to help kind of prevent any oxidation from occurring on the pads. And we'll go around the IC applying that flux. I'll come in with my temperature set around 350 uh, with a medium airflow and I'll carefully remove the ICs. Keeping in mind the direction of the dot in the corners the big I see the dot was in the top right and the small was in the top left. I'm going to take some low melt, go around and suck up all of the uh, factory solder on here. We'll add some more. 
uh, this is 138 solder paste and I'm going to go around and kind of mix it with any of the factory solder so that it makes it easier for me to wick with my iron. And ensure that I get as much as I can from the, from the pads as well. I'll, I'll, and I'll also do the same on these eight. A little bit harder to get at, but you can remove as much solder as possible. Using a microfiber cloth, some 99.9 .9 isopropyl alcohol, and a brush, I'm going to clean up the uh, burnt flux so that we can prep it for the new IC. Alright, so here's the two original ICs off of the original broken panel. I'm going to wick off all of the factory solder and uh, do the same on the small one. Get as much as I can, doesn't need to be perfect. Um, but I'm going to then clean them up so that they're ready to receive some new solder paste. I'll take a stencil. Just got a generic stencil that fits the same grid. I'm going to take some solder paste and evenly distribute it throughout the stencil. And come in and heat it up nice and slowly, about 300 degrees Celsius here. Just come in nice and slowly and heat it up so that we get an even reballing on this IC. This is what it should look like when you're done. I'm going to clean up the IC, get rid of any of the uh, burnt flux or anything, get it nice and ready for it. And I like to, on this type of IC, just smear some more flux down inside so that we get an even distribution of flux for when we're ready to install it. Now for the smaller IC, we're going to do the same thing, finding a stencil that'll work. This one I had to go at an angle so that it would work. But these generic stencils come in handy. And we'll flow those eight solder balls to be equal as well. A little bit of cleanup is necessary to remove any of the extra solder balls. But when we're done, we're left with nice, even solder balls under that IC. We'll add some flux, put it with the dot in that top left corner, heat it up and let it kind of flow down in place. You can see kind of when it starts to grab. Same thing with the bigger IC, we'll line it up with that dot in the top right and heat it up and it'll kind of flow into place. And then we're gonna come in, watch it heat up, and we're gonna give it a little nudge to ensure that both of them are solid, just like that. Now I'll add some isopropyl alcohol, clean up any of the flux that I can get at. You can kind of see how I have the whole panel isolated here from the heat. We'll put back the sticker, it covers up that IC. And now here we'll peel back these little stickers that help us get at the uh, plate that the little logic board sits on. Using some heat, plastic, isopropyl alcohol, we'll be able to break the adhesive that's holding on to that. Flip it over, and then I'm just going to pry away the logic board from, the, from this little frame that we'll need to transfer over to the new display panel. Peel back the protective uh, that's covering the adhesive there so that we can attach the frame to it. Now this is important, you wanna get this right in the right spot. So get a good idea before you pry it off where it needs to be. We'll remove any of the adhesive and I'm gonna use some double-sided shock absorb absorbing foam adhesive here to adhere it, replacing the old adhesive that we had to cut through. We'll peel off that protector, fold it over, and then we'll fold over these display uh, uh, flex cables and adhere them just like the factory. We'll slide back in this connector. And we'll remove any of the dust from the backlight. Add some adhesive to the display panel and prep it by removing the protectors 
from the camera and also the entire back panel. Once ready, we can peel this off and go straight to applying it so that we don't get any dust in the backlight. They'll slide under the rubber in the corners and then it'll adhere to the top and sides. Once it sits nice and flush, we can then screw it in. If you're having issues with it sitting in there flush at the bottom, like if it feels like it's sitting on something, you might have the bracket installed a little too high. So you need to make sure that it is following kind of the way you ha had the original panel. We'll put all the screws back the same way we took them out. Now we can uh, reinstall the little brackets and the bezel piece at the bottom. And there we go. You can see it's now working again. Uh, no damage display, no shadow at the top. We'll reinstall the back and there you go. Let me know if you have any comments, questions, comments below. And also if there's any other additional repairs that you'd like to see in the future. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.